No. Rolling. 49.1. I guess we'll start off with the poop report, which I'll preface by saying when you see like uh, Hugh Jackman as Wolverine, um, Hugh Jackman doesn't look like that. 365 days a year. They play games with... Stop moving your hands, guys. All right, with water. Like you give Hugh Jackman a lot of water to flush out the electrolytes, the salt and potassium that keep you puffy. And then the day of filming, you know, they kind of... Re they pull back on his water so he's dehydrated, so he looks extra ripped. And it's the same deal for, like, male underwear models. Anytime, like, somebody's got, like... You know, like 10 or 12 abs, you know, like a 12 pack. You know, often there's uh, some hocus pocus going on, some physiological hocus pocus, like getting really dehydrated and what. And anyway, I take a diuretic for blood pressure, a mild diuretic. And yesterday I screwed up. I'm. I was asking myself, have I taken my daily diuretic? Diuretic is a pill that makes you piss. Gets rid of excess fluid in your body. And I'm like, eh, doesn't matter, I'll take it. And you know, we got the, the Lance versus Rick tomorrow, and if I happen to have a little bit less fluid, maybe I'll look more cut. So I take the pill, and I got cramps, and I, 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 I've pooped 14 times in the last 24 hours. It was frickin' brutal. Um, but I'm hoping I'm looking slightly more ripped than usual. Uh, but it wasn't worth all the pooping. So, poop report. Now to my eyes. My eyes have been real. I wore contact lenses. My eyes have been really goopy, where the contact lenses get covered with, you know, the, the stuff that eventually turns into eye boogers in the corners of your eyes. And my wife has convinced me um, to blame climate change. Uh, because this, I usually get hay fever right when school gets out for the summer, at the beginning of June. And right now we're at the beginning to mid-April. And I'm getting goopy eyes. And Carol's saying, you know, it's probably climate change. Things are blooming sooner. And, you know, you know, when plants get all sexy, they send out pollen, and pollen is tiny, but it's also really spiky. So it gets under your contact lenses, and then your your eyes have to make eye goo to to to, to cushion to protect your eyelids and junk from all the pollen. That's anyway. That's the deal. Climate change. So this is the uh, this is the episode where I, I've been pointing the camera lances in here. Uh, this is the episode where we fake Lance's death to get ratings. Oh, yeah, well, the deal is Lance is obviously a highly skilled artist, but tends not to be compensated in proportion to his skill. But when a great artist dies, the value of their works, I don't know, what, triples, quadruples? So, yeah, we've been talking about, you know, we've got to fake Lance's death. So he hasn't really died, right? No, he's just off camera. Oh, okay. What but, do you uh, have, where's the skills for faking a death? Well, here's, here's, when I was thinking about faking my death in high school, so I could go back to high school, um, just to add drama, I guess, to the whole thing, I was thinking the way you would do it is, and this was in Colorado, which had some things that were important for death faking, um, is that, you, 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 you drain yourself of blood, pint by pint, over a period of, of several months. How many pints in the human body, Lance? Ten or something? Oh, he's I, not dead. Here's, here's Lance, not dead. Not even fake dead. Found Jesus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, so anyway, what I, my plan for faking my death was that I would... After I, after I was gone... I saw Hitler, I saw Mussolini, I saw Stalin, and uh, and uh, and it was it was it was uh, it smelled of of rotten eggs. Where Mao, I was. Mao, Mao, uh, Attila. It, it, it was it was and and they for some reason they thought I would go well there. So 
I, 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 I'm back, I'm, but I'm okay. back and, 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 and willing to repent. All right, so my plan, and we can use this here, but it's a little tougher because we don't have can steep canyons, but over a period of a few months, you, you, you accumulate and store in the freezer, I don't know, six or eight pints of, of your own blood. Then you thaw them out, you get your junker car, and you, 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 you flood your junker car with blood, and you know, rock on the accelerator, car over a, you know, a canyon um, in the Rockies. It goes over, it goes into a, a, you know, a river canyon and kind of washes down and, and ends up wrecked someplace. And when they investigate, they, they see, well, well, this is too much blood for somebody to have survived. So we ha haven't found the body, but the person has to be dead because look at all the blood. Tougher here because, well, no, I, you could run a car off the cliff here, I guess down in the Palisades or something. That's pretty ingenious, Rick. I don't know. I, there's probably... Except this was a plan I came up with in the 70s. I think probably there are, you know, technology's probably caught up with that. All right. If you wanted to kill somebody, that How would, do you have a plan for the perfect murder? No. Uh -uh. So, did we have a uh, topic today that you wanted oh, to share? Oh, there's a bunch of stuff. Besides was, poop. Right, I mean, this, every week now is a frickin'. Oh, one more thing is, I'm gonna, when we argue, I notice we both get agitated, and often my voice in normal life is, is low and masculine, but when we argue, and I, I start feeling anxiety, my voice, Climbs into the higher registers, and I'm, I don't like that. I want to be manly. I want to have a, a, a John Ham voice. So I'm going to try to, to keep a manly voice tonight. But uh, anyway, every week now is, is is a bunch of stuff. We this is the week we bombed Syria. This is the week that um, Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer had his various residences and offices raided by the FBI. Uh, what else did we... Uh... Uh, before we start, uh, that's good stuff. Could, we, could Lance just give us an update on the painting? Well, what, what I found out was that the fingers on the low hand look small. But uh, as I measure, it turns out that that's because on the low hand, you can see the tips of the fingers, which are always narrower than the base of the fingers. But on the high hand, you can only see the base segments of the fingers. So in other words, fingers are skinnier this way than this way? No, yeah. fingers are skin. Hold your hand up as a good model. Fingers are skinnier at the tips than they are when they emerge from the hand. Oh, okay. So what happens is this. If I have a painting where the tips are featured prominently at the bottom and the thickness is featured prominently at the top, this hand is going to look like it has thicker fingers. But it's not my fault that I painted it that way. All right. I hope that fascinated our millions of viewers. So um, you wanted to talk about uh, something terrible that happened this week. Well, just a bunch of stuff happened. Oh, also, Tuesday is, is Comey Book Day, but it's already been leaked. A lot of you know, the most sensational stuff. And Trump has already been you know, tweeting against it. And the GOP has a, a website called Lion Comey. Mm -hmm. um, so all that stuff is going on, too. Well, I I heard the uh, I heard excerpts from the book, and I don't know that there's anything really illegal that Comey is revealing. Is he revealing that uh, you know you're you're listening to the Democrat uh, news sources? Are they saying that they that Comey is accusing Trump of 
uh, collusion with the Russians? No, not that I've heard. Oh, well, surprise, surprise. I think it's more a demeanor thing. Ah, uh, a demeanor thing. And what, we can talk about demeanor. By the way, did you see Chappaquiddick yet? No. That's a typical Democrat and his behavior towards women, his demeanor towards women. Have you, did I you see I it? Say. I did, yeah. And, and I always knew Democrats would murder a woman and uh, lie about it afterwards. They have very poor demeanor with women, you know, Rick. So did, according to the movie, did he actually murder her? I thought he got drunk and drove off a bridge and um, then kind of well, be the, like negligent manslaughter. Here's the or something. funny thing. There are actually two theories about it. Wait, what did the movie say first? The movie we... relied entirely on testimony, court testimony. So there were only three people that were at the scene of the crime within the first hour. Two of them were Kennedy friends that claimed that they jumped in and tried to get her out of the car but couldn't open the door because of the water pressure. Um, this was how soon after he drove like, off the bridge? Like within an hour or so. Kennedy's the only other person that claims that, that has te testimony. And he says that he dove in and try and check the doors and couldn't open them. Then, um, but according to all the testimony, the um, he then went home and went to bed, and um, the because uh, he scuba, was drunk or what? He he, uh, he doesn't explain it, but the scuba diver that actually got her out of the car, got her body out of the car claims that he could have got her out and that she uh, she was wedged into an air pocket and was probably still alive when he went to bed. And that had he been notified immediately, he could have gotten her out of the car and so she'd be alive. You know what we need to do? We need but, to explain Chappaquiddick to our younger viewers, which is, this happened in what, 68? Uh, yeah, 69, good, okay. good guess, and, and do you want to explain it? Yeah, well, uh, Ted... Don't move your hand. All right, so you, got the, you have the Kennedy dynasty, where there were four brothers, right? Each of whom was uh, expected to maybe become president. First there was, who was the oldest? Who Joe. Got, Joe. So you got Joe, Joe Jr., who was the oldest Kennedy brother, and I guess perhaps the... The one, well, you have Joe Senior, who's the the real rich kind of guy, a guy who the the president's dad. Are you going to tell the whole history of the United States in this? No, just but like he made a bunch of money bootlegging, and then he was he ran RKO Pictures for a while, and a big rich kind of shady Boston family, and they have this golden boy Joe, who's going to be president. Then Joe gets himself killed in World War II, so then... Didn't the, get himself killed. He died quite bravely in action. Well, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just, I was speaking colloquially. All right. But, so, I mean, that guy has no blood on his hands. Joe okay. Kennedy, the oldest Kennedy, didn't do anything shady or wrong. And then you, so it goes down to the next oldest brother is Jack, who becomes president. And then you have Robert, RFK, who... Maybe would have become president, but got assassinated in '68. And then you have Ted, and Ted is—he's the youngest, and he's pretty black sheepy. He got kicked out of Harvard or caught at Harvard for cheating or some, just doing some dumb shit thing. Um, it was—I don't know whether he got kicked out or not. But if you're a Kennedy, you shouldn't. Why cheat at Harvard? So anyway, later on, Ted becomes a senator, a, a pretty well-regarded senator, because he's a Kennedy, but he's a little bit of a womanizer. And one, I don't know, weekend in 1969, he's up in, what, Cape Cod or something, or you know, Martha's Vineyard, one of those resorty places in Massachusetts, and he's driving with, who was... Don't move your hand. Okay. Who was Mary Jo Kopechny, an she, assistant? She was a campaign assistant, a fairly high-level campaign assistant to Robert Kennedy, who had died the previous year. 
And so um, the, the film makes it clear that Ted was preparing to run for president uh, and that this acts and, and he was at a party with Mary Jo Kopechny. He was driving her uh, home. He and the what they say is that he drove off a bridge uh, and that she drowned, but that he escaped. Now, um, I've just told you what his argument, his explanation was. He was driving her home, couldn't get her out of the car, kept jumping back in, or jump, and couldn't get her out, and so she died. Uh, this, the scuba guy, uh, the, the diver, claims that he could have gotten her out if he'd been notified, and Kennedy's, the worst thing about what Kennedy did was just not tell the police till the next day. Now, all that to say, I actually watched a BBC documentary on the uh, accident, and I saw an even more plausible explanation for what happened. Um, they interviewed three experts on uh, these kinds of accidents for insurance companies. Two, uh, two guys for insurance companies and a local and a Massachusetts detective. And their theory is that Kennedy had had sex with Mary Jo in the car and they had been spotted by a cop, which was in the film. A, the, a cop spotted their car on, a de, on an abandoned road, on a deserted road. And um, the theory that the BBC documentary says is that Kennedy jumped out of the car and let Mary Jo drive home because he didn't want to be accused of having an affair. But it was a very difficult place to drive in. There were, you know, it was very dark and uh, she didn't know the roads as well as he did. And she ended up driving off the bridge, which was really easy to do because there was no guard, there was no uh, fencing on the bridge. I mean, it was, anybody would have driven out over it. And the reason that he didn't notify anybody is because he didn't know she was dead until the next day. And then he claimed what had happened was that uh, this had all happened because he wanted to look like a hero. He, he, his, state, his argument was he was driving her home and he dove in to try to rescue her but was unable to, which makes him kind of like a, an innocent guy that tried to help her, right, as opposed to a guy that was cheating on his wife at a time when people really cared about that. So those are the two theories that are most plausible. And the reason the insurance company says that, that he might not have even been in the car is because she had no wounds on her body whatsoever. And the way the car was tipped, she would have been banged all to hell unless she was in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why they think she, he wasn't in the car. So okay. Either I, way, he looks like a jackass and possibly, you know, so I criminally have, negligent. I have a question for you guys. And, and this is kind of, it's, it's a, it, it, this is really out of that field, but I think it's pertinent for today. So do you think that it would have been, uh, Let's just suppose that that would have been Trump. If Trump, something like that would have happened. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do you think they would have, like, okay, well, what, do you think that they could have gotten information from, or do you think it would have been ethical at the time to get information, let's say, investigate the priests, the Catholic priests, and that perhaps Ted Kennedy confessed in confession, because he was Catholic, and maybe they could have learned the truth, or maybe the truth, maybe somewhere the priest, whoever his confessor was, uh, is it is it ethical to, as a way to find out what happened, is to maybe inquire with 
the Catholic priest. Do you think that's ethical? Do you think that's legally? I, I don't think it's particularly ethical because um, the, the, what you confess to a priest is supposed to be shielded. It, except, I guess, in cases where maybe, you know, the ethics come oh, in yeah. where, um, you know, you can prevent further harm. But the, the Mary Jo Kopechny is dead, and you'd just be trying to figure out exactly how culpable Ted Kennedy is. You're not trying to stop a serial killer. You're just trying to find out. So I don't. So you're saying that the, you know, that's second set, right? So aren't you making the argument for Donald Trump and the Cohen, the uh, attorney-client privilege? And isn't that just as sacrosanct as uh, a guy as he used to confessing to his priest, to his rabbi? Everything I hear from the, the liberal media that brainwashes me says that that lawyer-client privilege is dissolved when there is uh, criminal behavior on the part of the lawyer or something like that or potentially uh, people have been talking about that a lot and I haven't been paying that much attention because eh, it's just TV that plays all the time in the background but the, there are reasons why a lawyer client privilege doesn't apply in some of this well I mean my my understanding of it uh, is that in order for the lawyer-client privilege to be ignored, there has to be evidence of the lawyer being caught up in some horrific crime. And uh, I don't believe there is any. Did you see Cohen's plaid blazer? Huh. Okay, that's very comical, Rick. But my point is, is that um, it's really the same thing with the Trump, the whole Trump Russia collusion thing. One of the things we argued about a year ago is that you kept saying that well, it's like Watergate. It took 14 months to find out that, you know, all the evidence. And I kept saying, well, no, it didn't. It, it was obvious the first day Watergate began with a crime. It began with burglars being caught in the it, it red-handed in the Watergate Hotel, breaking in, and those burglars working for the Nixon administration. But there's never been a crime that the that you know what you have right now is a prosecutor looking for a crime now nobody a year ago was saying you know boy we've got to get madman cohen this guy that just happens to be the attorney for trump because he's a real criminal i mean he he's got bodies in the basement he's you know there is no crime that they caught him for and there's no crime there's no there's nothing that they ever caught Trump doing. And so there's no reason to be raiding this guy's house. And frankly, what amazes me is the hypocrisy of the Democrats. The, 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 you know, I, I, they, they don't cease to, to disgust me because something as, as uh, sacrosanct as, as attorney-client privilege if they, if they can get Trump, they'll give that up. I mean, you know, go after his attorney. Whatever you have to do, they'll do. Well, so, I So, I mean, my, my argument is, where is Mer Michael Cohen's breaking the law? He, I mean, did he do something that, would, that, that they've been investigating for? Or, or is it just a coincidence that all of a sudden, now that Trump's president, oh, there's this crime. That, that Michael Cohen did, and so we're going to have to we're going to have to take the hinges we're going to have to take the door off the hinges of the office and raid his place. This is absolutely crazy, Rick. Well, I've heard a couple things. One is that Michael Cohen was very nice to the FBI people, even thanked them after they were done, um, and two that 
what he might be guilty of is campaign, illegal campaign contributions, because if you pay a porn star an eighth of a million dollars to shut up, that that counts as, as a kind of campaign contribution if it's on behalf of Trump, um, and that that could run afoul of uh, campaign stuff. Yeah, actually, that's the exact opposite. But hold on, one more thing. When, is one more thing. Michael Cohen appears to have been a fixer, like paying people off to, to shut up or to, to make things right. If you want to see a really good movie about a, a lawyer who works as a fixer, watch Michael Clayton starring George Clooney and Tilda Swinton, and I think it's on uh, Netflix right now. Okay, so to show you how badly brainwashed you are by the Democrats, let me explain to you about that particular law, illegal campaign contributions. The problem with that law is that if you um, have money that is going to, say, your gardener or um, your barber or whatever, you don't count that as a campaign contribution because then there would be no end to the various things you could get a politician for. So the law is very specific on what a campaign contribution violation is. If you buy a billboard saying vote for Trump, if you pay for uh, a plane flight to go to a convention where Trump is going to speak, if you buy ads on TV or radio, those are campaign, uh, con those, that, that's a co campaign contribution if it goes to something specifically delineated for a campaign. So they deliberately made the law specific so that people wouldn't be brought up because somehow they paid for a barber or they paid for uh, a new suit that they might end up wearing at a campaign rally. So paying off, if your lawyer pays off a woman, that's not part of the campaign. It's not part of the campaign using your common sense, and it's not part of the campaign according to the law. All right. Um. So what they're doing is they're making an excuse to show Trump that he's not in charge. This is pure thuggery. And it's the kind of thing that would happen in the Soviet Union. Or would happen to the Clintons when Ken Starr was running special invest. I have to say that. just No, to, to yeah, but, but Ken Starr never did that to their lawyers. Nobody, no one has ever broken the attorney-client privilege, uh, uh, secrecy, privacy privilege in our country until the Democrats figured they'd get Trump. Except that the people doing it, Mueller's a Republican. And, and yeah, well, clearly um, that's just a, a, a diversion, Rick. He hired 17 Democrats that, that actually contributed to the Democrats. And how many Republicans? Democ None. Uh, no. Zero. That's not what I've heard. No. Well, you've been lied to. Well, then we should... His top right, seven, okay. his 17 guys are all Republicans, are all Democrats. All right, in two fact, things, two In things, fact, two they, even, they even showed up at Clinton's parties. All right, two things we should. I want no, to no, check. wait a minute. No, 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 wait. Two things. One, let's we can check it when we break, and I have to break now because I'm exhausted from all the pooping. Fine.